Good day, radio listeners. Welcome to this edition of the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. We're so glad to have you here with us. My name is Jonathan, and we actually have a special guest with us from across the hall. So, Gigi Hopkins, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, Gigi's you could our wife. say across the world, too. That's right, yeah. She's our, <laughs> she's our international representative here as well. And uh, before we jump into some stuff that's really good on, on wives' care and really helping um, women maybe deal with this issue of healthy detachment, I wanted, Gigi, if you would uh, share with our listeners about the wives' care groups, because I think that's mm-hmm. such an incredible tool and resource for women, and we've got some groups coming up here pretty soon. Uh, why don't you just share with our listeners about what the wives' care online groups are? Oh, thank you, Jonathan. That's my pleasure. Uh, um, We have our last season of um, Wives Care groups starting in October 19th, and it's a six weeks um, program that we go through on uh, video conferencing for those who want to be on video. Those that don't, they can call in. Um, and we go through some very basic guidelines uh, that will help a wife to really focus on her healing. And we call it guardrails for the journey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you will learn some, you know, about how to deal with your emotions. Um, how, this what we're going to talk about today, healthy sure. detachment relating to your husband, how to... Uh, focus on self-care or being a good steward of yourself. And so all these things are um, elements that are going to be needed throughout the journey. And we introduce them and point the ladies in the right direction. And so they also get to interact with each other because we have a a maximum of six ladies per group. Um, So you get this feeling of community or in getting out of isolation, which is uh, crucial to healthy healing for anybody. We need each other. Mm -hmm. We need to know we're not alone. There are many of us (laughs) in this uh, journey. And um, in fact, can I tell you something exciting? Yeah. This last um, group that we've had, one of the ladies said, hey, how can we keep a good thing going? So uh, she has uh, volunteered to be kind of a facilitator, and they're going to continue meeting uh, together, which just makes my heart sing. Oh, that's great. That's (laughs) kind of like what happens with our, uh, we have our aftercare program for the Gateway guys. And, you know, they get three calls with their group and their counselor and all that Mm -hmm. and we've had multiple groups over the years that have then said how can we keep doing this and we so we set them up to be able to continue to do those those groups right so hey i'm excited uh tell our listeners how they can how they can get more information about the wives care groups okay if you go to wivescare.com right and you click on uh groups uh on the menu you will easily find a way to register. And mm-hmm. they do get filled up. So, yeah, so you, I encourage you to save your spot if you want to go on this journey. Um, you can easily register and all of that. So Good. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm excited about this, uh, this week's program because um, it's an issue that um, I think is, is necessary, especially for women. I mean, I think this could be helpful for for anyone who's having issues in relationships or struggling with self-care and those kinds of things. But obviously, since you're dealing with wives' care, Mm -hmm. we're mainly going to be speaking to the wives out there. So why don't you help us understand where we're going to be going with this idea of healthy detachment, how this is something that you're involved in, just kind of where where we're going to start. Yeah, this is the third... uh session that we have on on the wives care groups and I have to tell you this is the heart to me it's kind of a core um, subject that we need to tackle Um, it's meant the world to me (laughs) uh, in in terms of just a survival technique for for my journey Mm -hmm. so I I'm really pleased um, me and, and the other facilitators you know to get to share that with the ladies and I have to say, the, the first time this was kind of introduced to me, I, I didn't have language for this back then, but 
uh, it was when uh, with one of the people that were helping me in uh, an older and stable lady um, and I remember we were not in a good place my husband and I in those days and my my family was not doing well my my girls were teenagers and things just looked like a wreck you know and I was trying to just manage everything Mm-hmm. I was, you know, worried about we're not having devotionals, we're not, uh, we're, I'm seeing needs unmet and this and that, you know, how many wives, we, oh, sure, yeah. because we want to take care of our home, right? And we hate to see things undone. And, and I was losing sleep. And I think it's important at this point mm-hmm. to affirm that those desires to care and to help are good natural desires yes. that God has put into women. Right. And so we, we don't want to just gloss over that and think that, well, what was wrong with you, Gigi, <laughs> trying to want to help your husband and help your family? It's like, no, that's actually the good part. Now tell us where the struggle <laughs> came in. Yeah, it, you're right. It is natural and good. It's just that in some places in life, you know, those things are just not going to be done. And it can cross over to perfectionism too. Because mm-hmm. you want things to be the way that you dreamed they were, and unfortunately they were they're not you and, know? Then, and then it <laughs> so. seems to me like one of the things that could happen there is then you start to try to to force outcomes right you mm-hmm. might become manipulative, you might become controlling in some of those yeah. aspects right because you're saying i right. even if the desire for a particular outcome is good, the fact that then you're trying to force it creates a lot of unhealth in you, in your relationship, probably creates even more discord and division. Correct. Um, So, for instance, I'll give you an example, Mm -hmm. right? If, if, uh, when you were not in a good place, Jonathan, if your wife, uh, you know, you you were hardly uh, moving forward and your wife was saying, was saying to you, um, you need to have devotionals every day for the family. <laughs> yeah, that's not met with a whole lot of warmth and receptivity. <laughs> right? It just wouldn't work. It's, you know, right. I could choose to do that in a private setting with my children, right? I mm-hmm. mean, but I just had to bring my expectations to reality. And then, so going back to back then, um, I, I, I was speaking with this uh, wonderful lady and... And she told me, whoa, 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 you are trying to be God. Mm. (laughs) You are trying to do way more than you can, you know. And you know what? Just like a juggling act, you're going to have to let some plates fall. Mm. (sighs) Yeah, that's not what you, that's not really what you want to hear in that moment, right? At that moment, you're that's, thinking, I got to keep all the plates spinning. That's right. I've got to do it all. You know, I mean, the world depends on me, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, that's what I thought. And this lady helped me see that, no, you know what? God has just the right things for you to be concerned and involved with. And you've got to discern what they are and focus on them mm-hmm. rather than trying to maintain a reality that's not even there. Mm. So that's how I first got introduced to this concept. And I'll tell you what, it was hard to to swallow at first, but my gosh, it was so liberating. Mm. When I first said, you know, and, and I did that in prayer, when I couldn't do something for my family, I said, Lord, I give it to you. And I trust that you're gonna somehow make this work. <laughs> yeah. So you you took more of what we would call the the long road in terms of of getting to a place of personally embracing and understanding this concept of healthy detachment. We hope what we can do through this program is maybe shorten that road for many women out there. In other words, not feeling like they've just got to stumble along and kind of figure this out on their own. Hopefully what we can bring to them today is some clarity of maybe defining what healthy detachment is, and then, okay, how can you actually move more towards what this means in your own life? So why don't you share with our listeners what, what, is, what is healthy detachment? So I, you know, I hang out with some pretty brilliant friends, and one of them is a, a, 
one Just of the so you facilitators. Know, listeners, she's not talking about me. She's talking about the ladies that she works with. <laughs> well, you're too. You're brilliant too. Uh, but this um, friend of ours and in the ministry, she's a volunteer with the Wives mm -hmm. Care groups, and her name is Ronnie. And she has come up with a great um, definition that I'll read to you about what healthy detachment is. And this is the definition from wife to wife <laughs> right. in this situation. I love that. She says, healthy detachment is the tool I use to regain my footing after a crazy spell. And who doesn't have a crazy spell? Sure, especially in this kind of arena of sexual brokenness. I mean, right? in, in a marriage, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. It is the reset button in which I choose to focus on my own healing and allow my husband to take responsibility of himself. Mm. That's wow. good. So the idea here is that it is a, it's a process or a way in which to kind of get some stability for her Yes. Without feeling like she's got to control outcomes, manipulate outcomes, fit, you know, do the whole perfectionism thing and all that. So this yeah. is her maybe being able to sit and take a moment to go, wait a second, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And how am I, am I bringing health into my being? Am I bringing health into this situation or am I starting to kind of spiral and spin out of control? Is that a good way to maybe think of it? It's like a, it's yes. a way to bring stability into the moment. To center yeah. yourself, to refocus, right? Um, and I, I've, one of my favorite passages, I probably have s shared this before, even in, in the broadcast, but it's uh, from Matthew, Matthew 11, 28, when Jesus says, come to me, all you mm -hmm. who are weary and heavy laden, in, in that passage, he says, my, my burden uh, is, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, mm -hmm. right? So when I was in that, when we got in a crazy spell, our burden feels like it's killing us. <laughs> you right. know, the yoke, you know, the thing that attaches us to what God's plan and what he has for us seems like it's wounding us to almost suffocating right so i have to take a step back i think this has been a good measurement for me to just take a step back and say okay wait a minute lord what burden am i taking that's not mine mm. that's good you know or to say what am i attaching myself to that is not your agenda for me mm. you know because your word says different <laughs> right. So that has just given me a a good um, a good way to recenter and refocus. Good. Yeah. So, Gigi, you have you have five bullet points here for steps that lead to healthy detachment. And for the sake of time, I want us to go ahead and jump into those, okay. so that we can help these ladies kind of feel like okay. I get it. Yeah, I mean, I know when I have a crazy spell, I need to reset. I need to find some grounding. So how do I do that? What does this look like? Can we start helping these ladies maybe understand how to engage in healthy detachment for their own self-care? Yeah. Well, initially, Jonathan, I, I would say, you know, you we need to embrace our healing journey. I know some wives... Um, including me probably in the past, I've thought, wait a minute, this is my husband's problem. And right. uh, why should I even bother? Why should I go to a group? Why should I, you know, why yeah, do I need to... what work do I have to do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Truth is, you know, this is a deep suffering that you're going through, and God has a purpose in this, right? We can either... Uh, just stand back and watch, or we can just get fully engaged with him in this um, and say, Lord, uh, I'm open. <laughs> I'm open to uh, hearing from you what you're going to teach me through that. That's my journey, mm -hmm. right? Um, realize that this will be a personal journey of healing. There will be the marriage, you know, restoration part, probably later, um, before 
before that, we need to take care of ourselves. So anyways, I would say initially we need to embrace our own healing journey mm -hmm. in order to even understand what we're going through. And I think it's important, don't you think it's important at this point to say that what this healthy detachment about is about is understanding where your personal responsibility is not. So when the idea of embracing your own healing journey is not taking on to yourself as a wife any kind of culpability right for what your husband has chosen to do in terms of his sexual acting out or anything like that but it is at least acknowledging i have been wounded mm -hmm. i have been betrayed and i need healing from that's that right. as a as an individual Mm -hmm. So that's that's important, I think, for our listeners to realize is that because I think a lot of wives feel like if I'm going to a group, if I'm seeking help, I'm essentially saying it's it's really, you know, what my husband's doing is now somehow my fault. Mm -hmm. And it's not saying that it's saying the things that have been inflicted upon you because of what your husband has done and the pain that you're carrying there. You need to embrace the journey that you now need to go on if you want to if you want to be healed. That's right. And I think as you get into it, you will uh, also figure out that, you know, we're broken too. Exactly. <laughs> we have issues too. And, and even though, so. and this is something that I think we bring up a lot when we're talking about wives and husbands, is that we, being able to have that common ground of recognition that we're both broken, mm -hmm. even if it manifests in very different ways, can be really helpful for even the eventual healing of the relationship yes. because you're recognizing we're not so different from each other as we like to think we are. Right. Just because we can point out how you fail differently than I do. Yes. Doesn't mean that I don't fail. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, we're still, we've got that common ground of brokenness. Yes. So right. what else do, what's the next thing here that the next thing uh, I mentioned here is just that we need to get a long-term perspective. You know, we are in a fast, quick fix, quick food mm -hmm. culture. And I think uh, we need to understand that nothing about this journey is a quick fix. <laughs> That's right. a hard thing because we want a recipe. We want maybe a program send my husband to Gateway to Freedom, and then everything is going to be okay. You know, truth is, you know, we're all a work in progress, and this is going to take time. Mm -hmm. He didn't get there overnight, as far as your husband is concerned, right? Sure. We, in our brokenness, haven't gotten to where we are overnight either, the things that God will be working through. So it's good to understand that because of the the long-term journey it's kind of a it's the process of sanctification really right exactly uh, there's an, and and recognize that not only did we not get here quickly but we're not going to get where we want to go quickly no. either and recognizing i think too it's important in the idea of thinking about this being long term is to remember that it's we're in a process in this life the, this entire life Yes. So you also need to, in the same way that we instruct husbands when they're dealing with their recovery, to not have a what we call a destination mindset, meaning, hey, I'm just trying to get to a particular point where then all is going to be well. I think a wife needs to realize, too, this isn't about a destination mindset of saying, hey, I just need to get to X spot and then everything will be fine. What we're really, I think everything even about this healthy detachment is learning an ongoing process because I love how Ronnie says it, crazy spells, right? Yes. Do you think that because you're working on healing and healthy detachment that you're done with crazy spells in your life? Sometimes we can have crazy spells with people that aren't our spouse, right? Just mm -hmm. think, and this is helpful even in those situations to say, okay, now what am I doing to be recentered and to bring health and not to spin out of control, right? Absolutely, Jonathan. When we focus on our own journey and really listening to what God has for us, we learn things that will apply to so many other circumstances. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's amazing, right? The treasure that we can get out of this. So, but with this in mind, the, the long-term perspective, um, this is really, 
I believe that learning how to detach from the things that don't belong to us uh, is what will give us kind of the power to have emotional stamina throughout the journey, the long journey, mm -hmm. you know, definitely, of course, that involves connecting with God in this process, right? But it's learning our place, you know, L the discipline of place, staying put where God really has us be, yeah. right? And I, I, I said, you know, this is what from the serenity prayer, this is what sure. will give us uh, the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, like in, in those back then in my years, you know, when I had to just let go. And then the courage to really totally be um, effective in the things that I can change and the wisdom to know the difference, you know, and what belongs a, to God and what belongs to me, what belongs to my husband. Yeah, and I think that's central to this whole idea of healthy attachment <laughs> is, you know, James 1 tells us to pray for wisdom. And that God yeah, promises to give it. And he promises to give it generously. Yeah. So for for all the wives out there listening, um, I'm not... I'm not saying that you're not already doing this, but be persistent mm -hmm. in those prayers for wisdom because this is really what I think this healthy detachment boils down to is being able to know where are those lines of what do I need to own in terms of what I need to carry and what do I need to let go and realize yes. those aren't me, that's not my responsibility. So let's keep moving here because the next thing is pretty interesting about this idea of over care. So why don't you help our listeners know um, what it means to to be aware of these attitudes and behaviors that might be comprised in this term over care. What does that mean? <laughs> you know, I came across on some coach reading this term and when I when I saw it I'm wow, this makes so much sense because that's what I was doing back then. I was over caring. Mm -hmm. Way over caring, you know, about um, things that I had no control uh, over. Um, and so, I'll and let's make you. sure let's make sure that the listeners know, you know, because sometimes you think you hear the, you hear a term like overcare, and you think, well, what's wrong with that? I mean, care is good, so more is better, right? Right. But I think what we're talking about here is overcare means we are extending beyond not only our capacity but our responsibility, right? Yes. In care, and that's that's where I think care can become unhealthy and even detrimental to your to your being. It's uh, even, even Jesus, it said, would often withdraw to lonely places to pray. He got into places of solitude to care for his own, if I can put it this way, his own soul, his own being with the Father. And so mm -hmm. even he in his flesh was modeling for us, there's limitations. Yes. We can't, and so help us understand that in this, con in this concept of overcare. Right, and I, if I may, I, I'll just read a little here sure. because it helps some. Uh, so overcare is when we care, when, when the care we give to someone or to a cause dear to our hearts causes anxiety, guilt, anger, or a feeling of being drained. I think the feeling of being drained is very important there. And these are warning signs of overcare. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of fuel it when it's coming, right? It is quite common for any of us to occasionally over-identify and over-attach ourselves to the object of our caring, especially if it involves someone we love. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so it's. I think the. I think a, a point to be made here is it doesn't mean that caring will not sometimes cause anger. Or some of these other feelings but the idea is is that becoming kind of the predominant outcome right of your care meaning like when you were talking earlier you said hey i've got to i've got to basically carry the world you know i've got to make all of this work yes that is a sense of overcare which basically says my reach needs to extend in every aspect of everything around me not realizing that each of those individuals in your family also carry a personal responsibility for the decisions they make. Mm -hmm. And the overcare is essentially sometimes saying, no, I got to be in all of it. 
and I got to maybe control all of it, or I've got to make sure the outcome. In other words, with the husband, it's, it's like we said before, right? To care and to desire good and to want to see great outcomes is a perfectly good desire, right? Mm -hmm. But then to take it to the extreme that says, I'm going to over care in the sense that now I'm going to be a part of every single decision you make. And I'm going to make sure that, you know, all, all these things are dictated out the way I want them to occur. That is taking that, I think, to that degree of where that's not healthy detachment. That's, I like to call it enmeshment. Yes. The idea that there's a difference between um, when you think about the, the picture we're given in Scripture of two becoming one flesh. It doesn't mean that the two lose their distinctive identities. Mm -hmm. The idea of becoming one flesh is not like a third entity is created. It's saying something new is made through the two. Mm -hmm. And what enmeshment does is it's almost as if this wife will lose her own self mm -hmm. into her husband in a way that is not healthy because now she's like, well, where did she go? She's no longer her anymore. Right. And and that's, I think, the, the danger of this overcare. And so healthy detachment is being able to recognize, have I, have I overstepped into this idea of overcare? And now what do I need to do to bring some balance into my life? And Jonathan, I love your point of enmeshment because I think that's the problem with a lot of wives who find themselves in, in this situation with her mm -hmm. husband dealing with sexual brokenness. Even before uh, many of us knew of the problem, you know, we, are, we, we were already dealing with someone who was not healthy. Sure. And who was um, probably, probably moody. Probably we were trying to figure out what, what are we going to do to please this man or, you know, and we, many of us, and I, I definitely did that, we, we lost ourselves mm -hmm. in that process. So uh, part of healthy detachment is regaining a sense of self and understanding you know who we are and how we need to position ourselves mm -hmm. i know we're running out of time. we've got just a little bit of time left but i do want to touch on these last two points here in mm -hmm. terms of being less reactive and then also bringing some balance so why don't you speak to that one as we wrap up yeah the less less reactive is i've i've learned how to take a step back from situations that would cause a crazy spell, mm -hmm. you know, and learn how to evaluate what's really going on in my heart first, you know, because that's mm -hmm. my responsibility. I can't evaluate my husband's heart, <laughs> you know, but I can do mine. And why, why, for instance, a lot of us are triggered by beautiful women, you know, and why does that bother me so much? What's behind that? Mm -hmm. Am I fearing? Am I trying to tell my husband? what to think which i can't <laughs> you know or uh, am i thinking uh, very lowly of myself so that's one and then the other thing is that's about the reactive mm -hmm. being less reactive and bringing myself to balance and ultimately in a time of great emotional stability instability it's really important to focus on what is true yeah. And what is true is in God's word. So uh, that's something that worked for me. I encourage you to just find uh, one word, could be a verse that you focus on for a while, mm -hmm. you know, and just um, that will help you center yourself. Yeah. So as we close here, uh, Gigi, why don't you share again how ladies can get uh, connected with wives care and the groups and things like that? Yes, uh, you are welcome to go to wivescare.com. You can also set up uh, a free, you know, appointment to talk about anything you'd like to with me. Um, this is my calling. This is mm -hmm. what God has given me to do here at Be Broken to be here for wives. So I would be uh, honored to hear your story and uh, help you navigate what to do next for your healing journey. Yeah. 
Well, Gigi, as always, we're we're glad to have you on our team and glad to have you here. Mm -hmm. And uh, listeners, we're always glad to have you with us. And if you'd like uh, more information about our ministry, go to puresexradio.com. And we look forward to having you back here again next time on the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. <laughs>